Also, as I was watching the weatherman on one of the videos posted on YouTube, he talked about Honeymoon Island and Caledesi Island and how the great hurricane of the 1920s came through and split those islands in half. Ian, move out of here. Remember, Ian was moving so slow over the state. Uh, let's go out to Sanibel again. We've got some great live pictures out there, by the way. Take a look at this. Okay, so this is, this is the causeway. Uh, so not only did we see the bridge fall, but this is the road that would take you to the bridge. It's gone. Take a look at that. That is the asphalt there just washed away. The actual barrier island that the road surface then continues on, uh, that could have been washed away. And, and this, is, this, is, this is a lesson of what a barrier island is. Uh, barrier islands such as Sanibel, Captiva, Siesta Key, St. Pete Beach, Pasigrill, they are not permanent structures in nature. They are meant to move. They are sand barriers for the main coast. The fact that we build on them breaks every rule in nature, and this is what you have to go through to maintain infrastructure on barrier islands. You, you have to rebuild. Uh, there may be portions of this causeway where sand has to be brought back in to create an island to run a causeway on. Uh, case in point here in the Bay Area, before the great hurricane in the 1920s that hit Tarpon Springs, Honeymoon Island and Caladesi were one island. Now they're two. And Caladesi is cut off from Honeymoon and it is broken up by something called Hurricane Pass. That Hurricane Pass, that break in between those two barrier islands, was created by that hurricane in the 1920s. And that is a natural motion of the sand. Those barrier islands over time are supposed to shift north and south along the coast, providing a natural barrier from waves and storms for areas farther inland. All these beach development that we have put in along the coast, we really have to try to fight nature in these storms uh, to try to rebuild it and maintain it. And that's gonna be a lot of work there in Southwest Florida. Just incredible live images there as the sun comes up. And I'm sure that is just the beginning of what we'll see there uh, from Southwest Florida. So, so they became honey the honeymoon in Caledesi Island. Now, I'm on Google Maps and you know, I always like to look around and see stuff, right? So this is, well, let's just go down here. I wanna show you where Fort Myers, which is pretty far down here. Let's see. Okay, there's Fort Myers. This is Fort Myers where the eye of the hurricane came in. Ian, where Hurricane Ian, Ian, came in just the other day. So the, the great hurricane of the 1920s came in through Tarpon Springs. And... Here's Honeymoon Island right here, and right, I'm going to show you, I'm going to blow this up again. Okay, so this is Honeymoon Island right here, and this is Caledesi Island, okay? Now, it's really interesting when you look in this far up, and down here is Clearwater Beach, Sand Key, all that. Now, I'm going to blow this up, I'm going to show you just how weird it is that people actually build houses right on the water like this. And that's what they've done all the way up and down the coast of Florida is they're building houses on these sandbars and these little barrier islands and everything. And I mean, you feel sorry for the people that move there because they have no idea that, you know, in nature, this shouldn't even be happening. Okay. So let me just blow this up bigger here. So let's just say, now I've been to Honeymoon Island many times since I've lived here. And it's a nice island. It's a nice beach island. They've got beautiful beaches. And they have a doggy beach. When I had my dog, I used to take my dog there. Anyway, so let me blow this up bigger here. All right. So they have a little boat that leaves Honeymoon Island and takes you over to Caledesi Island, which is right here as we travel down. Okay. And on this little island, they've got a cafe, they've got a restroom and showers, it blows up a little more. Okay, so you can literally get on Caledesi Island and walk to Clearwater Beach. Okay, let's keep going. Now here's where people start building houses, look at this. 
Is this crazy? I mean, is this freaking crazy? Look at that. And over here is the Gulf. Let me, let me zoom out of this. Just to give you a better idea. Look at this. You see? See what I'm talking about? And you want to feel sorry for people who lost their homes and everything. But you know, when you're that close to this huge gulf or ocean, it's like, wow, you guys, you know, you kind of risk your lives being that close to water like that. So this is where the Clearwater Beach is. And I've, I have been here many, many times. And this is the Gulf to Bay. My friend Carol was talking about that today. This is Gulf to Bay. Coming in on Gulf to Bay to Clearwater. Here's the beach. Beaches are on the left here. Okay. Then over here you have Sand Key Bridge takes you to Sand Key Park, Sand Key Island here. And then you've got all these condos that have been built. You see that? you got a beach club, Sand Key Club, condos right here, condos. I mean, think about this. These are right on this little tiny strip of sand, really. <laughs> I'll zoom back again. Look at all this. And as it takes you further south, then you come down to St. Petersburg area. And here's St. Pete Beach. Now, just to give you an idea of where St. Pete is, there's St. Pete. And this is Tampa Bay over here. This is Tampa Bay. This, right up in here, originally, let's go up, let's go up here to right here, Newport Ritchie. This is where the hurricane was supposed to come in, right, right about over through here. Right about here was originally supposed to come in. Then it came down, and then it came over here. The spaghetti models, the tracking models kept moving. And then it came, you know, it hit all the way down to Fort Myers. Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Port Charlotte, right here. Right here is where it's made, we made its entry. This is my friend Terry lives down in Naples here. I've got my friend Cindy who lives over here. Um, I have some friends over here in West Palm. So I have friends in Orlando. You know, I got friends all over the state. Um, so everyone's safe, though. Everyone's okay. All right, now let's just look at Tampa again. Let's let's blow this up. Look at Tampa. So in the Tampa Bay that you were looking at, you saw where the water was sucked out of the bay because the wind and the now, all that was sucked that water out, but then it came right back in. But this is literally um, what Florida looks like from the air, looking down from the atmosphere, basically. But you could see that unless you're living in the middle, I mean, there's no way to escape anything here. And then even over here, my friend, my friend Rosie, she lived in, let's see, where was she? She's over by, Pan by Panama City. It's when Michael, Hurricane Michael came in a couple years ago and totally, totally wiped that whole area she was so blessed at Lynn Haven. Here's where she lives. And she was so lucky that, that Hurricane Michael did not take her house down. She, she even said she don't know how her house was spared. She really don't. And she was very blessed. All right. Now, 
when we look at where Michael or when uh, Ian is going, so across the state, it's going to be coming up over here. So, and it's at already a category one. So, this is where it's going to be going. So, you know, this is why I've been spending a little bit of time looking at all this stuff and seeing exactly. And you got to remember now, this is looking from way above. This, this is up in the atmosphere, you know, this is up in way, up, way up high. And when you look at it, and you see how big that hurricane was that came in. It covered all so much. But the point I wanted to make was that when people live right on the water, that is the first place that's going to be destroyed. So if we go over here to Fort Myers, where it came in, and then there's also Sanibel Island that was destroyed. Let's see, where in the heck is Sanibel Island? I'm trying to remember. Let's see, I, I went to Sanibel Island when I first moved to Florida with my partner and we had a really nice long weekend and Santa Bellaline was so beautiful. I can't, can't remember exactly where it's at, but anyway, let's see, where's my where's Fort Myers again? Oh, I gotta find out what this map is. Okay, Fort here is Sanibel, right here. Here's Sanibel, right by Fort Myers. So Sanibel Island, as a guy said, is a barrier island of all sand. And they built things on there, which by nature, it shouldn't even have been happening. They shouldn't have never even built anything on this. And look at everything that was built on a barrier island. So, uh, you know, who do you blame for this? Who do you blame for this? I mean, a lot of people made a lot of money building here. And a lot of people spent a lot of money to buy these properties here. And it's just interesting to see, when you look on the map like this, how small the state of Florida really is when you look at it this way. You know what I'm saying? And you had those couple million new people that just moved to this state from, like, California and o Omaha, like that one gentleman that moved here in Omaha and bought that business restaurant in Fort Myers and now it's completely destroyed so and he was talking about moving back to Omaha so when we look at our land from the air it really isn't that big after all and when I say it really isn't that big after all when you've got a hurricane that look watch my watch my little pink arrow here that's like this big coming in our land is not that small, not that big at all. Isn't that interesting? I want to share this with you all. I hope everybody's staying safe now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.